Good morning, everybody. It's lovely to be here this morning. And uh, I just want to just encourage you to please turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 for our reading for this morning. But firstly, I just want to give a big thank you to uh, Richard and Alan and to the leadership team here at Carraby, as well as to the church as a whole for the generous giving uh, to the work of PAA, Printing Aid Abroad. I'm here this morning just to give you a brief update on uh, some of the ministries uh, that are going on. And uh, it's, uh, 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 it's just wonderful to see what God is doing. And because of the generous giving of the saints and, again, uh, to the church here at Carraby, which all goes toward the printing and the distribution of the uh, booklets that uh, Albert has produced. Uh, it's exciting to see what God is doing. The booklets have gone Queensland wide and they will be distributed throughout the Solomon Islands as well as up into India and in Myanmar uh, where there is terrible persecution at the moment and because Christians are fleeing for their lives, those booklets are finding their way up into the south of China, uh, also into India, into Kenya and Uganda, and we hope and pray with our next printing and distribution, we'll see the booklets uh, filter into Nigeria. Uh, it's a wonderful publication, very sound, but very simple and very basic to help new converts as well as church leaders to better understand the Bible. It, it's just simply a aid, a resource, just to help uh, uh, believers to better understand the Bible. Also, the Assembly Aid Abroad ministry is very strong at this time. Uh, by all reports, uh, there are many who are coming to uh, the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, being converted and being baptised and who are coming around the emblems in remembrance of the Lord and who are uh, uh, living uh, in obedience to the principles of the New Testament. So there's some more good news with regard to the Assembly Aid Abroad Ministry. The churches are growing numerically and we trust spiritually the ministry is reaching out to thousands of people in uh, Kenya uh, and into Uganda, Tanzania and up into North India where there are thousands of school students who are being exposed to the good news of the gospel and of course it, the word the gospel is also going into prisons over there in Africa as well so continue to pray uh, uh, for these ministries uh, uh, it's just as i say exciting to see god work and through the power of the gospel to see people come to the saving knowledge of the lord jesus christ and what is it that drives christians what is it that motivates christians to love and to worship and to obey and to serve the Lord Jesus Christ as we've already heard this morning what is it that motivated and drove Pastor John to endure that hardship for days on end well no doubt in my mind it is because in the portion of scripture that we'll be looking at this morning the power of the cross and the hope of resurrection the power of the cross and the hope of resurrection. Please look at verse 58 of 1 Corinthians chapter 15, just for our starting point for this morning. And we read there, this verse, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labour is not in vain in the Lord. And it is when we love and serve the Lord for his glory, for the furtherance of his kingdom, with the motive of love 
and with the attitude of humility, there is tremendous blessing here and now, and there will be an eternal reward to come. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. I don't know what your lot is. I don't know what your gifts or your calling is in serving the Lord. But whatever you may be doing for the Lord, whether you're a mother at home raising children or whatever your gifts or calling are, do it unto the Lord. That is what this verse is really emphasising. And when we come across a verse, as we see in verse 58, the word therefore or wherefore, what that does is always throws us back to what was previously said. So let's do that and we'll start at verse 51 for time's sake. We'll look at uh, verse 51 in 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And we read, Behold. Now, in our language today, we would, we would say, Wow, this is amazing. And this is amazing. What well, Paul has to teach the Corinthian church here. Verse 51 again, he says, Behold, I tell you a mystery. Now, what was a mystery? A mystery was a truth that was once hidden in the Old Testament but is now revealed in the New Testament. It has now been revealed to the church. And there were seven mysteries that were contained in the Old Testament. Firstly, and without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh, 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. Secondly, there was the mystery of Christ coming to indwell within the believer's life. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27. Thirdly, there was the mystery of the church. Fourth, the rapture of the church which is mentioned here in this portion of Scripture, which we will examine today. Fifth, the mystery of lawlessness. Sixth, the mystery of Israel's unbelief. And seventh, mystery Babylon, which refers to all the false religious systems of the world, which God will ultimately one day judge and destroy. Back to verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. There's coming a day, brothers and sisters, when the only the dead bodies of Christians will be resurrected and the living Christians will be raptured to meet the Lord in the air. Paul also teaches this in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 16 to 18. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first then we who are alive, do we see that verse there again? Read verse 51. Behold, I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep. We shall not all sleep. There will be a generation that will be alive when the Lord returns. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always, always, always be with the Lord, therefore comfort one another with these words. From verse 52. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. 
But this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality. There's coming a day, brothers and sisters, there is coming a day when you will look the best that you have ever looked and you will feel the best that you have ever felt. And what a wonderful day, what a wonderful day that will be. In heaven, believe me, there are no walking sticks, no wheelchairs, no migraines, no more backaches, no more sickness, no more disease, no more death. Praise the Lord. What a wonderful, blessed hope is ours. And that is our hope, isn't it, as Christians? That is indeed our hope. Titus 2.13, looking for the blessed hope and the glorious appearing of our great God and Saviour, Jesus Christ. And we are to be looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. He is to be the centre and the circumference of our lives. As Paul also writes in Philippians chapter 3, verses 20 and 21, with regard to the Christian's hope, for our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our lowly bodies and can conform it to his own glorious body. What a day, what a day that will be. Reading on, verse 54 again. So when this corruptible has put on incorruption and this mortal has put on immortality, praise the Lord, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. This at least will be true for the church at that time. When Christ comes to take those who belong to him, the church, the bride of Christ, all those who have been converted from the day of Pentecost to the day of the rapture will be taken up and we will always, always, always be with the Lord. At that time, at that time, death is swallowed up for us at least, the church, the bride of Christ in victory. Verse 55. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Here Paul is actually mocking death. He is taunting at death. Read it again, verse 55. O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? The greatest weapon that Satan has over all humanity is the power of death. It is the power of death. But for us as Christians, death for us is simply a doorway into God's presence, a doorway into our eternal home. That's all death is. As the psalmist wrote in 23 verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Also, Paul writes in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 8, For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Absent, present, absent, present, absent, present. Nothing in between. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Philippians chapter 1, verse 20, Paul there writes, For to me to live is Christ and to die is gain. Verse 23, and having a desire to depart, Paul speaking of his death there, and be with Christ, which is far better. Praise the Lord. Verse 55 again, O death, where is your sting? O Hades, where is your victory? Verse 56, the sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is is the law. Very interesting verse, this verse. Very interesting verse. 
The sting of death is sin. Anybody been stung by a bee here? And it hurts, eh? And when a bee stings, it leaves its stinger in its victim. And this is exactly what Christ accomplished for us on the cross at Calvary when he took the sting of death in his own body on that tree. The just for the unjust that he might bring us to God so we could go free. It was there on that cross that he died in our place. He died on our behalf. It was there on that cross that he died my death and he died your death. The second half of that verse says, and the strength of sin is the law. The strength of sin is the law. Now, question, how many times can the law condemn and kill a person? How many times? Only once? Only once. And if you are a Christian, that is exactly what happened on the day of your conversion. On that day when you cried out to God and asked him for, to forgive you for your sins, it was as though God catapulted you, supernaturally catapulted you back in time and there you died with Christ on that cross. Paul makes that teaching very clear in Galatians chapter 2, verses 19 and 20. He says, for I, through the law, died to the law that I might live to God. I have been crucified with Christ. Now, to the Jew, the cross and crucifixion meant only one thing. It meant death. It meant death. It didn't mean carrying a burden. It didn't mean going through a trial. It meant death. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who lives, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself, can we all say it, for me. And it is faith, brothers and sisters, faith. Faith that gives us the victory over our flesh, over the devil and over the world. Even if your faith is the size of a mustard seed in Christ, you will accomplish great things. And that's why we read in verse 57, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And indeed, Christ has gained the victory. He has conquered death and he has overcome the grave. And if we are in Christ, likewise, we also have that victory. If we know our Bibles, the warfare has been won. Brothers and sisters, we are on the winning side. Have you come to Jesus Christ? to repent of your sins and put your faith in him because we can only be saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone, to the glory of God alone. And he offers that free gift of eternal life to all who will simply come. That's what Jesus cried and that is the church, the cry of the church today. Come unto me, all you who labour and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. That's a salvation rest from trying to earn your salvation or trying to work your way into heaven. That's the wonderful gift that God is offering through his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, the gift of eternal life. And there's no greater gift for mankind to receive. We may be going through trials. We may be having troubles. There may be many a battle and skirmish along the way. But ultimately, the war has been won, and brothers and sisters, we are on the winning side. 
So continue as the next verse 58 as we've already examined to serve the Lord. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labour is not in vain in the Lord. So continue to encourage one another. Continue to uh, edify and build one another in our most holy faith. And uh, it's lovely to hear that uh, there's much prayer because it's uh, the ch church that prays together that stays together. And there, there's uh, many Christians around the world in over 60 countries that are suffering because of their love for God and their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. So again, I just want to, on behalf of uh, Printing Aid Abroad and Assembly Aid Abroad, just say a big thank you for your generosity and uh, for the opportunity as well to be able to serve together as we see the good news of the gospel goes out to the four corners of the earth to the saving of precious souls. So keep up the good work and be encouraged. Be encouraged. Because as I say, <coughs> in my mind, no doubt, what motivates, what drives a Christian to love and to obey and worship and serve the Lord is indeed, in this portion of Scripture at least, the power of the cross and the hope of resurrection. What a wonderful future lies before us brothers and sisters continue to walk by faith daily trust and obey but look forward to that day when we will be in his very presence hallelujah let's pray father we do want to just come before you and just say thank you our great god we praise you and thank you uh, for the wonderful future which is ours but lord we stand on the promises that are ours in the word of god all of this could not be accomplished unless you sent the Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray and praise you and thank you for seeing our need, our great God. And Lord, for sending uh, your Son, your only begotten Son. And it was there that he indeed died our death and the death of all those who repented their sins and believe in him. Lord, we pray and thank you that you are still building your church and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. So, Father God, we pray for those dear saints overseas. Lord, have mercy. We pray, Lord, that there is so much suffering um, uh, that a lot of us just don't understand. Um, Lord, uh, just atrocities galore that's uh, going on. And... Uh, Lord, we know that uh, there is a brighter day to come for a lot of these that are lingering in jails or, Lord, who have lost loved ones and whose children have been kidnapped. Uh, Lord, we just pray and praise you and thank you uh, that we can cast all our cares upon you, knowing that you care for us. And, Father, we just, again, pray for many of the key leaders in those uh, persecuted countries that they indeed lord would continue to be a beacon of light and uh, a soundboard for the gospel in the hope that many even persecutors like those soldiers lord who can uh, hear the gospel and, and uh, lord turn turn from their sins and be saved from a lost eternity because there's no greater gift than the gift of eternal life so father Use us as well. We pray, we thank you, and uh, give you all the glory. In and through the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen.